Well, this isn't exactly where I intended to be or even hoped to be today. No, there's nothing wrong with it, but I intended to be in the NEC today with a photo show, but I'm sure all of you know it's been postponed because of the coronavirus. Um, so we're now going to wait until September for that 19th to the 21st of September, I think, if you don't know. Which is a real shame because I was really looking forward to it. Um, as I said in my last vlog, you know, for me, it wasn't the shopping. It was the opportunity to catch up with some friends. Um, but, you know, it can wait and I'm sure we'll be able to catch up soon. So rather than waste the weekend or the day, I thought I'd come out. And today is going to be about exploring local ancient woodland. And I'm at a place today called Old Sule Wood, which is not far from Peterborough, near Wandsford, um, just into Northamptonshire, I think. So this wood was recommended to me by actually one of my subscribers and coincidentally somebody I used to work with many, many years ago, um, a chap called David Mills. So thanks for recommending it, David. I haven't really, I've just got here, um, so I've not given it a proper explore around, but it looks good. Um, a lot of uh, hazel coppice around by the looks of it, but there does seem to be some quite old trees um, intertwined within the hazel coppices. So hopefully I can find some nice compositions. Um, I'm not expecting any great light, although it's a nice cloudy day with the odd break. So you never know, we might get the odd ray of light coming through, which would be good. But what I'm probably gonna be able to do today is to um, go in a little bit tighter, uh, a bit more intimate, as we vloggers say, um, and probably just try and catch some of the features and the characters of some of these older trees. Um, so that's the plan. Let's see how we get on. So I have only just walked into these woods and already spotted this old tree here with some lovely character to it. It's got some green moss on all the branches. It's twisted and gnarly and the light's starting to come through and when it hits the moss, it really lifts it. So what I was just trying to do then was to try and frame it up handhold. Um, and you'll see I've got the 70 to 200 on, one of my favorite lenses. Um, and I just, what I was trying to do is just work out how the composition was going to work because I'm not quite sure. It's clearly, with the 70 to 200, I'm going to go in uh, tighter to the tree and, and not just get the whole tree in the frame. And one of the reasons I don't want to do that is because you've got a lot of bright sky behind the tree which will blow the highlights out and they will be quite distracting to the eye. So I need to come in a bit tighter to reduce as much of that highlight in the background as I can. So yeah, I was just trying to find a composition that allowed me to use, um, I guess the bulk of the tree in the center and then where the um, branches were poking out, I was trying to get those into the corners or to come round into a line that sort of leads the eye through. And I've got two options I think I've just taken. One is a vertical option, which has actually got the trunk of the tree in and it sort of bends round a bit to from left to right and up out to the top right hand corner. And then a, uh, a landscape orientation option which gets the tree coming out from left to right. There's two smaller branches, one going to the left corner and one going out to the right hand side and then the bulk of the tree going up. And I actually think they both quite work so I'll need to decide when I look at them later. Um, the real, there will be a bit of highlight behind the tree but hopefully not too much and I can reduce that in post anyway. Um, 
there's a lot of distraction behind the tree as well so I am going to try and have to do something in post to try and reduce that distraction as much as possible and just make that tree more prominent but I think it's a you know f as an image perspective I think it will probably work it will need a bit of work in post but I think it'll work but I just love the character of the tree I think it's great so if this place is full of trees like this then I'm going to be a happy man today. <laughs> photogenic and moss covered trees you can't resist them this one I found is obviously an old bit of dead fall that's fell years ago completely covered in moss pointing its way out and you've got some lovely arms going out left right and up and so I've come down quite low with this I'm using the uh, tree trunk here coming out the left hand corner of the frame to lead you up to these branches here um, now aperture is a little bit different on this one. Um, you'll notice I've got the 16 to 35 on, so and I'm at um, I'm actually at fully at 35 mil. But because I'm close to the tree trunk here, um, what I've done is I've done two or three at f9 to f11, focused around the uh, the base of the sorry the end of the tree there, just where the focus is uh, is meant to be. Um, which will give me a depth of field within that area um, but obviously it will be shallow up here front so I've taken another shot then uh, focused at the front here um, to keep the front in uh, in focus uh, and then I'll probably blend those as a focus stack. What I've also done is taken another shot focused here just next to my lens um, but on f5.6 um, so that's intentionally then made the trunk in the back out of focus um, just to see what that one looks like might like that because it then sort of disappears and there is a lot of stuff in the background that really isn't that interesting this is it's all about the tree so we'll play with both of those and see what they look like but um, yeah it's just they're just so attractive these old trees with them with the moss on them um, they really are the birds singing peace of the forest well, what's not to like, eh? <laughs> now, I'm not sure whether any of you watch um, Simon Booth's channel. Uh, he's another YouTube landscape photographer, but he's very much a nature photographer as well. And I subscribe to his channel and I really admire his knowledge of nature and forests, the wildlife, um, the plantation um, and I watched one of his vlogs last night and uh, he found one of these, um, obviously it's an old dead uh, trunk hollowed out in the middle and I would suspect that this is a home for some bird, um, quite a big hole, so it will probably fit something like a jay, or I don't know whether they get jays around here, but certainly the bigger birds can go around there. But the one that he found was, um, I think, for a nuthatch, uh, and you could see where they'd, they'd knocked in to create their own little habitat inside the tree trunk. Oh, that is fascinating. So if you don't subscribe to Simon, I'll leave a link up and, uh, and you can subscribe to his channel. Fascinating bloke, really is, and a blooming good photographer as well. Really good with his nature photography and his landscape photography. But yeah, just when you stumble across these things, just remind you that, um, you know, this is, we're in somebody else's habitat here and that's where they live. Fascinating. And I'm not sure whether there's a shot here or not, but I'm fascinated by this. Somebody in the comments tell me what this tree is. Um, I'll show you it on a little bit of B-roll a bit closer. But look at these here. This is the roots that have come out from the bottom. 
and they tangled all the way around here, up, back through the tree, back round here, and then there's another one up there that's coming around and creating all of these spirals of, of roots or look like tentacles. I'll tell you what they do remind me of. I don't know whether you've seen the, the Guinness Book of Records. You've got the guy with the longest fingernails in the world. It looks like that. You know, they look like really long spindly fingernails. It's fascinating. So yeah, somebody tell me what tree this is because I'd love to know and I'd love to know whether this is just typical of this type of tree that it does this or whether it's just so old that it's just left to find its own course of I guess looking for light or looking for moisture but absolutely fascinating. I might just try and get a shot anyway just to capture it because I just think it's fascinating but I don't think it'll be a great shot but I might just try one anyway. Wow. This place is just full of compositions. And I think the green moss has a lot to do with it because it does pull the eye. But these two trees here caught my eye as I walked past, both leaning in exactly the same direction. And there's a little path here on the right hand side that goes off down and it goes off down to a, um, another sort of fallen tree, but it's just full of lumpy, bumpy moss on it. <laughs> Some real character. So, I have struggled a bit with this composition, if I'm honest, to try and... Because I want to use these two trees on the left and the right. Uh, I've got them coming out the left-hand corner and angled over to the right-hand side. But I also wanted to try and get that um, path leading down there, and it's just difficult to do. I've also got quite a lot of highlights in the sky, so I'll probably end up probably a 16 by 9 crop on this. Um, cropping out top and bottom just to crop the highlights and the, you know, the, the ground isn't that interesting. Um, but there's some, even into the forest just behind, there's loads of these fallen mossy trees. It's just fantastic. Um, th David, thank you so much for telling me about this place. It's just great. I'm definitely going to be back here, back here in the spring and the autumn. Um, yeah, no, it's a great place. So I'll show you this shot and then um, I may see if I can do something with that knobbly, mossy stuff. <laughs> knobbly, mossy stuff. <laughs> I must stop finding compositions, otherwise this video is going to be half an hour long. <laughs> Fallen tree. It's a bit more white on the bark of this tree, which makes it a little bit more interesting. And the other good thing about this tree is there's a lot of foliage in the background, higher trees, it's down low and it, um, therefore the background isn't as blown out. Um, so this, this one I've got the tree going out left and right from the bottom of the frame, bottom middle of the frame going out left and right, going up, spindly branches, green moss, nice texture. Oh. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it here, I really am. I just hope these pictures come out. I'm sure they will. Right, I do probably need to get off. Um, meeting a load of people later, so can't be here all afternoon and I'm hungry. I've got my lunch in the car because I only expected to be here probably a half an hour to an hour. My lunch in the car, I'm starving. Anyway, here's this one and I'll see if there's any more, um, but I'll probably head back and see if there's any more on the way back. I meant to say earlier that um, as I say, I've come today to an ancient uh, woods nearby where I live and you'd be surprised how many ancient woodlands you've got in your neighbourhood. Um, if you go to a, I think it's the DEFRA website, I'll put a link below this video, I think it's magic.org or something, but if you go to this website you can actually just click on ancient woodlands and it will bring you up a map of the UK and you can zoom in and try and find where the local um, ancient woodlands are around near you. 
Um, I'd recommend it. You know, there's they'll be overgrown clearly because they're ancient, but uh, they'll probably have some trees in there that have got some character to them, like the ones I've had here today. So I definitely recommend checking that out uh, if if you're sort of looking for a place locally. And as we go through the year, these these woodlands just change in in, uh, in conditions. And you know, once you get the light or you get the the autumn colours or the spring colours, they're just a fantastic place to wander around and, and take some images. So I'm going to call it here. Um, before I do, don't shoot off uh, because I'd like to just um, say thanks for watching this. And I would like your help to encourage people to subscribe to my channel if possible. I'm, I've hit the 900 and I'm in between 900 and 1,000 subscribers now. So and I'm quite keen. I think it's just that milestone to get to 1,000. So if you can like, share, subscribe if you haven't already to, to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I love doing these vlogs, um, but you know, I guess just to get to that 1K milestone just is something that, uh, that us vloggers aim to do. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have, I've had a great afternoon. Right, I'm gonna go now, have something to eat. I'm gonna meet a load of other um, photographers that I'm helping out later. We've got to meet up later on uh, and I'm probably record a video, I might show it next week, um, where we've got some, uh, some, some photographers that are on a bit of a challenge this week and I'm going down to give them a hand. So hope to see you soon and yeah, see you on the next vlog, maybe next week, which will be late this afternoon. Or not. I don't know. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'll see you soon. <laughs>